take a breath. Who is this here? Coming in. That looks like Takashi. And, that that and Courtney DeWalter. DeWalter. Those shorts. So she's running in sixth currently. She's coming in right with the fifth place runner. And then she's followed by two more um, male athletes just behind her. One of whom might be Anthony Lee. Um, a really great position for him to be in, actually, at this stage of the race, yes. I would say. Running really, really smart. But yeah, so um, Takashi, though, uh, runs for the the North Face Japan. I believe that is who's right in front of Courtney. And then your race leader, Courtney DeWalter, um, Bib 301. Mostly all smiles, I think, there. Mostly all smiles. She's got a little, a little dirty jersey, so I don't know if she went down back there or is just brushing up against stuff. Yeah, they did. They did have a climb kind of out of the valley up to a steep little point across a, a bit of a rib um, and then back down again to connect into this aid station. And that's a pretty common spot for like the hand wipe. If you've got, you know, grabbed mud or something like that or like fell, took a little hand down. That's a, yeah, a you'd common, you'd wipe a common it off wipe space. There. Yeah, our queen, Courtney DeWalter, again, kicked off her season. Phenomenal performance at Trans Grand Canaria. Someone asked actually. You know, if she wins wins here and she won at Trans Grand Canaria, does that mean she just wins the the World Trail Majors? Like, that's two wins. And I said, unless someone else gets two wins, and then you have to go to a tiebreaker, right? Oh, my gosh. The beer mile tiebreaker. You know, if Rachel Drake goes to UTCT and wins oh. UTCT, then they both have two wins, right? That would be so much fun. Yeah, I say it has to be it has to be a televised. Mountain Outpost will televise the beer mile tiebreaker between the two of them. I think that sounds like a, a rad idea. I think we'll have to pass it by a bunch of higher ups, but we can make this happen. I think we can make that happen. But yeah, so Courtney, I'm actually curious. So at the last aid station, Courtney had about a seven minute lead over second place. And at that point, it was Japanese athlete Yukari um, Samaya. So I'm going to do Our some. Our French athlete, Alexandre, is. Oh, should be in the aid station. He's in the aid station now. Cool. Yeah. So I know that there are a lot of French spectators actually watching on the World Trail Majors channel. Um, your your boy, your French athlete, Alexandre, has made it into the aid station. He's actually probably just right of our camera shot looking at Stingray um, because his crew should just be to the right of where Stingray's crew is set up. I don't know if we'll get him in shot or not based on where that camera is yeah it looks like he came in f uh, roughly four minutes behind stingray cool and there's takashi and then courtney yep little uphill little uphill pavement climb into the aid station you know what's amazing about courtney to me is she never really looks like she's going full speed she's just so consistent it yeah she she's very efficient i think and it's just like we don't understand how fast yeah yeah okay jeff is saying she has a very high cadence i d he, i do think well wrong. i think when she downshifts she does really have a very a very high cadence. oh jeff is jeff is grabbing one of our couch mics we could mic him this whole time he had no idea courtney all smiles and waves in the aid station oh yeah i'm on <laughs> nice yeah i was saying that she has a very high cadence um I've had the opportunity to run with her quite a bit in races, um, spent, spent time with her, and um, she's very, very efficient runner, and she's a very good power hiker. I too. think Alexander actually just gave her a high five when she came in because he his crew set up right immediately on the right-hand side, and I'm, I'm fairly certain that I saw him turn and give her a high five as she came in, so that, that is pretty awesome. sweet. And that's Takashi there with Bib 3, last year's third-place finisher, so that will help us remember. Last year's second-place male's wearing Bib 2, last year's... Third place male is wearing bib three, both Japanese athletes. Okay, so that's Takashi right there of North Face Japan. Courtney doing her signature wet wipe on the face. Oh, I think we've got a change up. Yeah, I think I misread one of our bib numbers. That should be... Um, yeah, Biv one, Tomonori, Onisuka, I think was that came through there, and we can check on the live tracker too because that should have come up when they left where they came in to aid two. Yeah, it looks very, it looks humid. Yeah, they're wet. They're all yeah. wet, right? Yeah, and we're we're looking at about seventy. As the sun gets up, it's going to get even more humid. It's 70% humidity today. 
Oh, it's Akashi's Bib 7. There we go. I'm getting them all put together. So number three is Tominori Onitsuka. And he was third last year. Yeah, her hair is very wet. Yeah. yeah. A very humid morning. Yeah. Her and Kevin just have such a great aid station, like, smooth vibe for her. Everything's dialed. And the fact that he's still smiling tells me that things are going well. Yeah, he doesn't look too serious. Yeah, getting no. eye drops in. Yeah, so Court has actually had experiences at races that go overnight, like Run, Rabbit, Run, where she basically your pupils can get really inflamed, and she's had some vision vision issues during the race, where she's literally gone race like ultra blind, essentially. And so she's really adamant about getting those eye drops in throughout the course. Oh, of the race. Anthony, Anthony Lee. Lee. There's yep. Anthony Lee right there. So it looks like they're leaving together. Courtney came in just ahead of him, and they are now leaving side by side. Nice. She was really quick through that aid station. Yeah, efficient. One thing we're learning with uh, with Courtney DeWalter in all things is just efficiency. All right, let's go to Marco. Hey, guys. Uh, so I have Kevin next to me. So um, Corrine and Jeff is on the other side. How are you, Kevin? Excellent. How's everybody this morning? How's everybody? <laughs> I'm loving the great. I'm loving the supporter bibs. Those Wish, are sick. Uh, Corinne and Jeff are over here. Miss those guys. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, how was uh, How was Connie feeling? Like from from your perspective, how how is she moving? Uh, she's moving well. Yeah, she looks really good. Um, just had a one of the biggest climbs over here. Uh, pretty tough section, but I think she moved through it really well. Um, came in quick, and yeah, it looks good. I saw from the side you guys have some small talks. Like, what were you guys talking about? If it's okay to share. <laughs> I was just telling her uh, like how many miles she has until I see her again and um, yeah, just how, how the race is going so far. Did and you tell her any jokes just yet? Uh, not yet. We'll <laughs> save those for later. <laughs> All right. I'll wait to hear those. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh, I also amazing. have um, John's spirit. wife on the other side. Let me see if I can grab her and talk for a quick second. It's a busy little aid station. Sorry to interrupt. Can I ask you for a quick, quick yeah, questions? They, they, wanna, they want to take this space. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay, I'll come back to you in a bit. All right. Maybe I can go to Anthony's support and ask for a few questions. That'd be amazing because we actually only saw him leave the aid station, so we didn't get to see see him in aid. So very curious to actually know kind of what he looks like and how he's feeling. So I have uh, Anthony's support, Yudi, uh, right next to me. So let me ask him a few questions and I can do the translation. Yuri-kun, 